I'm only saying this to point out that human people suck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love y'all. Hallöchen, Popöchen. Hey, everybody. Willkommen auf dem ultimativen Musikkanal. Welcome to the ultimate world music reaction channel. We are exploring something from my motherland, Deutschland, Germany. So... For those of you who've been following this journey, who are a part of this community, you know that I am Cuban and German. How that happened is my father is Cuban American, born in Cuba, came to America, joined the US Army and was deployed in Germany and met my German mother. So I'm Cuban German, but I was I grew up bilingual, speaking English and German at home. That is why I have an American accent. Today, I want to check out a German band. You've been waiting patiently, many of you, for me to feature more German music and German artists on this channel. Now, here's the thing. Rammstein um, is a very famous German band, known by many of you who love rock and metal. I didn't listen to Rammstein growing up. I know like one song of theirs and not even the full song. I know like the phrase, du hast, du hast mich, something like that. I, as many of you, I was not into metal. I like rock and I like some heavy rock, but metal, heavy metal was never my thing. And Rammstein is just known for their really heavy um, music and intense songs even just going through the list a little bit trying to decide which song i'm going to um, react to some of the titles even i was like nope not gonna happen um but i think i'm gonna try their song deutschland today germany deutschland is the german word for germany and um you've suggested it i don't know what to expect because i never heard it um i'm curious to see how it presents how it paints Germany. So for those of you who are not German, obviously there's typical stereotypes like the Lederhosen and Sauerkraut and Schnitzel and beer and depending on what region of Germany you're from, right? If I share my German experience with you, uh, being born, having been born and raised there, my entire life spent there, came here in 2011. Now I live in America, born in Karlsruhe and then lived near Stuttgart, ha uh, went to college in the Black Forest, in Schwarzwald. Um, so always anywhere between in Baden-Württemberg. And even in Germany, though, it's a smaller country compared to America, obviously. Even there, you'll find cultural differences between North Germans and in the East and South. So that's something to keep in mind. Even people commenting here uh, who are German, they may share experiences with you or call thing, give things a different name than what I call things. So I think it's gonna be pretty heavy and I'm a little uh, nervous just because I know they have heavy music and yeah. What's crazy is they put this out three years ago and it has 289 million views. Craziness. Um, the word Rammstein is interesting because Stein is German for stone. Rammstein could, I guess, be translated as ramming stone. Rammstein is a German Neue Deutsche Härte formed in Berlin. A no, is a German Neue Deutsche Härte band formed in Berlin in 94. Neue Deutsche Härte means new German hardness. <laughs> so that's, that's funny. Um, are you ready? I don't think I am. As always, like, share, subscribe, all the links below if you want to say thanks, become a patron, get access to more content, get some merch, and so on and so forth. Here we go. Germania Magna 16 AD. Wow. Germany.
Okay, stop real quick. So that already, even though I don't listen to Rammstein, is already like, okay, this sounds very Rammstein-y, right? Du hast. That totally reminds me of du hast. Du hast mich. Um, and that's like the only thing I could think of if I hear Rammstein. Um, but... I've got to say, so the, the the cinematography is phenomenal. I think, what did it say? Universal Pictures presents this. So they worked on this. Amazing video, like movie-like, obviously. And different uh, eras and um, times in the German history. And uh, the musical composition is already epic. I won't say much other than, other than that, but that's already powerful. Like that introduction had a techno vibe and EDM and techno is big in Europe as well. So is metal. A lot of amazing metal bands come out of Europe. So it's cool to see that many people, even around the world, appreciate a German band and know that there's more that comes out of Germany than, I don't know, beer and sausages and cars. <laughs> um, or that know Germany for its bad history, right? Um, because it's so much more. Um, Let's keep going. I'm 
in my face over here. <laughs> but in the... Station. Okay, let us talk. Das Ende. Hakuna Matata. Was in aller Weltgeschichte? What in all the world history? <laughs> okay, so do you want me to talk about this in the German-English accent? Because I can do that too. We can talk about this. This is a German accent. Ja, diggity. I can tell you what I think and what happened here. Many people probably know already. All right. So, it seems to be... Wow. Um... What do I begin? This is huge. So they have over 7 million subscribers. Rammstein is huge, known around the world. The song, 289 million views. Crazy. And they only put this out three years ago. That's a lot. Um, so many of you probably already know what's happening here because chances are you looked up this video or found this video because you like Rammstein reactions. So um, I'll try to not just talk about what happened because many of you may already know, but I want to also go at this, just share my thoughts. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to title this uh, Cuban, Cuban German reacts to Rammstein or therapist counselor because I have a master's in counseling psychology. As you, as many of you know, I like bringing in music and psychology in this channel. I guess whatever I decided, you'll know now because you're watching the video. But I'm trying to figure out, you know, how much I'm going to look at this from a psychological standpoint, right? When it comes to Germany, it's history and the song, or how much am I going to just look at it as a German and what's going on here? So just to summarize without going into crazy much detail, this is a song called Deutschland, Germany, in English, I mean in German, and um, it paints this picture, phenomenal cinematography, by the way, even though it was really heavy at times and a little intense and there was really weird elements and a lot going on, I have a feeling I'm going to miss quite a bit, but it was painting this picture of Germany through the different eras of German history. And we'll talk about which in just a second. I found a couple of cool articles that'll help me articulate uh, what's going on that also help me understand it a bit better. So it starts with this whole Du hast. And that was already, to me, um, reminded me of that little part of Rammstein that I do know, which is Du hast, Du hast me. But I don't listen to Rammstein. Who are all the different um, members? 
band members of Rammstein. I don't even know all their names. Hakuna Matata. Um, Till Lindemann, Richard, uh, Richard Kruspe, Christian Lorenz, Christoph Schneider, Paul Landers. Now I'm saying it in English. Oliver Riedel. Wer singt denn hier? Lead singer is Till Lindemann. Till Lindemann. And he is an actor, poet, and a German musician. He has a phenomenal voice. He has a very rich, full voice. Very strong had a lot of breath control, um, and very interesting because though he was, he's not an operatic singer, I feel like, and I don't know any of this other stuff, but his voice is, is so strong, and I think even possibly versatile, that I even feel like there's operatic elements in it, though he wasn't singing opera at all, but he's just a very, you can just tell, it's a very trained vocalist, very, very, very skilled. Now, the song Deutschland is um, sung in German, and it's about the band's feelings, I suppose, if you will, and perhaps even many Germans' feelings about the country, giving a glimpse into the German history, taking us through the different eras, as I mentioned. And there's a lot of violence in the video, which is also a big part of German history. Unfortunately, I think when many people think of Germany, like I said in the beginning, there are stereotypes like the schnitzel and the, the um, lederhosen and the, the spia, the beer, but then, of course, obviously also Hitler and um, Nazis and the genocide of Jews and the Holocaust and so on and so forth. Um, it says, Germany, my heart in flames. I want to love and I want to condemn or damn you. Your breath's cold, so young and yet so old. This one source, song meaning and facts, says that ultimately every positive characteristic that Rammstein identifies, that uh, Rammstein associates with Germany, is also accompanied by fault. And I gathered that from the lyrics too. Um, even saying things like, uh, let's look at those different words. It was neat in German, which it'll make more sense if you understand German. In German, we have uh, extra vowels. A, I, A, O, and U with the two little dots that look like eyes. E, Ö, Ü. And so there was this, this sequence of words, überlegen, übernehmen, übergeben, überraschen, überfallen. And that was kind of a neat play. And then later on, uh, same thing with other words. And so basically it's saying you're overbearing or arrogant, um, to take taking over, surrendering, giving something over. Überfallen means like to overtack, to take over, um, raid, invade. Um, Deutschland, Deutschland über allen. Now that's a very close reference to Deutschland über alles, which was the Nazi anthem. Deutschland, Deutschland über alles. Um, and they're, uh, other than a letter, they're variating, other than a one letter variation where they say Deutschland über allen, Germany overall, it's that reference to the Nazi anthem. And then it speaks of um, Germany, my heart is in flames, um, so young, so old. And then later on it says, again with the Ü, Übermächtig, überflüssig, übermenschen, überdrüssig, superior, um, needless, like unnecessary, überdrüssig, like, you know, sick of something, whoever rises high will fall low. So this idea of, you know, you rise really high, you're going to fall really low. We love you and, and condemn you. My breath is cold, so young, so old. Your love is a curse and a blessing. My I, Germany, I cannot give you my love. And what's weird is... If I'm seeing correctly, it's ending on that note. Germany, I cannot give you my love. Germany. Definitely this idea of, you know, I love you, I hate you, from arrogance to your big fall, and then going through Germany's history. Now, um, it's obvious that they're not shying away from Germany's horrendous and horrific past, um, all the violence and the arrogance and criticizing the, the reign of the Nazis and depicting themselves as victims of it, which that's an interesting note here on this source, songmeaningandfacts.com, because I wouldn't be surprised if some that are from Germany or that love Germany are not victims of what the Nazis did to the Jews. Don't get me wrong, because the Jews were the victims. But it's it's been this stain, this filth stain on Germany to this very day, where there are people, dare I say ignorant people, that may still feel a hate towards this generation of Germans because of what former generations have done. Similar to, not saying it's the same, but similar to, you know, the ugly things that have happened in America where there's division and there is still a lot of generational trauma and hurt um, and blaming that occurs where, if we're not careful, division in our current generation amongst one another can occur because of what was done in the past. 
And of course, you have different perspectives there too. Those who still blame and who still want to be restored and want reparations. And then those who say this has nothing to do with me and wasn't even born yet. You know, like every country, I feel like where you have a major historic event of such tragedy and such amount, I could see that obviously sweeping into generations to come. This was released on uh, in 2019 on March in March. Huge project, huge, huge, huge pro project. The music video to this song contributed to the track's fame or infamy, depending on your perspective. I, I could see that. It features a controversial and violent view of Germany, along with other challenging imagery. But ultimately, such shock, shock tactics are part of Rammstein's established shtick. I agree with that. I could definitely see, even though I'm not familiar with Rammstein, just what I know of them, just knowing common knowledge, I feel like, you know, they're very provocative, very out there, very intense. One of the reasons why I probably never even listened to them much The other source, metalheadcommunity.com, some of you may know this, says it's the band's first work in over 10 years has not been without controversy. However, it's more attractive to the general public, the video clips more attractive to the general public than the song itself. And it takes us through that bloody journey through his German history. Uh, talks about that reference to the Nazi anthem, recreating references to the Holocaust. Starts with um, Germania Magna, where the Roman conquest of Germania, future Germany, ended. Then the next era that talk that is talked about in the video is the arrival of Christianity, right? We see the cross and those monks. Although the arrival of Christianity wasn't as bloody as in America, this source says, it came to be seen that the Christians, mostly foreigners, were undoing the country to keep a peace, this source says. Thus in Rammstein's Deutschland, clergymen are seen savaging, are seen devouring, eating Germany. Like, it's like savages. And then just to kind of generalize a bit, we got those medieval wars, really just intense war, gore. The country had its own crusade in 1197, which is so crazy when you look at some of these dates, how old Germany is. It's an interesting reference, how young, how old, because Germany is old. Like some of the buildings in not just, you know, touristic sites, but like buildings, just regular buildings are older, way older than your grandmama's house. Like just, that's one of the things I love about Europe is history is rich, the buildings are old, it's just some solid stuff, it's beautiful. And then we have the Inquisition. Even though the Spanish Inquisition is known to be very barbaric, the German one is not far behind it. In Germany, there were four times more witchcraft hunts um, or murders than in Spain. A lot of the population dying, hyperinflation, In 1921, during the Weimarer Republik, the Hindenburg accident, Hindenburg, was one of the biggest lead zeppelins built in the world. It was operational for a year, and then it made a transatlantic flight from Germany to New Jersey and caught fire. And what else is referenced? The Holocaust, that's a big one where they were being hung. RDA, that was the, the German Dem Democratic Republic. After World War II, Germany being divided by the Allies, West and East, we got the wall. So you have all these different references. What else? Terrorism reference in the mid-1970s in West Germany. There was a terrorist group with Marxist ideals. Riots in the late 1980s. The future, right? We have the very futuristic stuff, which was so weird. I did not like that at all with that woman. I think it was a woman laying on a table and giving birth to a dog. And then all these guys in these suits with dogs in their hand. Um, a future that doesn't look good. I agree with that source on this one. A board on a spaceship. And it's interesting because that laser beam we saw in the beginning was at the end of the video again. And it looked from the globe perspective like it was coming out of Germany. At least from the angle that the, I could see the globe at. It looked like that could be from Germany. Which would make sense because Deutschland. <laughs> and then that, you know, space shuttle flying off. In Deutschland, in the video clip Deutschland, this woman is pregnant and her delivery is by a cardinal, which is also weird. She produces a Leonberger puppy. And in real history, it happened that after the First World War, only five of this dog race survived. It was an attempt by Mr. Heinrich Essig to create a dog that looked like a lion, part of the crest of Leonberg. So ending on this idea of experiment, of breeding humans and animals, of Leonberg or dogs coming about, um, very weird, almost like Germany's future is what? People playing God? Weird species flying off into space? The new race being started by something that almost went extinct. It definitely talks about all these different aspects of German history. And there's, like we've said before, no denying that German's history was rough and bloody, but I feel like that goes for many countries. And while I understand perhaps for some the need to reflect on history and have an honest conversation about everything that Germany and Germania is, 
what I feel is missing here, at least from what I'm perceiving, because it's so dark and heavy and provocative, which we know Rammstein is known for, what I'm missing is a lot of the more positive things that have come out of Germany. What Germany became famous for, what put Germany on the map, was horrible. There's no question about it. But nonetheless, Germany was put on the map. I mean, just the fact that they were able to stop the Roman Empire from conquering all of Germania shows a certain level of strength. And I think that goes for every country. And something we forget sometimes is that through the history and through the wars and through humans' greed and desire for power to conquer, to take over, to fight back, there's so much that happens in the process. I mean, that's why when we do things like Ancestry.com and we try to tap into where we come from, we find out that we're a mix of all kinds of things way, way back when. Um, because as far as we can go back, as much as we're able to, we see that things just mixed over the course of time. So I think that while we do need to be honest about the horror, I feel like it's not a bad thing to also have a level of, of pride of where you come from and an appreciation for the good things. There are a lot of great things that have come out of Germany, but this is also maybe not something that Rammstein would do because that's just not what they do when, with their music. To me, the overarching theme is darker than it is positive. Uh, one thing that is very interesting that I want to make sure I talk about um, in this video before we wrap up is the fact that they used um, a lady of African descent, a melanated woman, to represent Germania, Germania. I found a very interesting article on ethnomusicologyreview.ucla.edu uh, that spoke of their, I, it was an essay, if you will, on why they picked a black Germania. And I'm not going to go into detail into all of what was said. It's a very eloquently written article, very interesting. But uh, we know, as mentioned before, that Rammstein, they're described as a Gesamtkunstwerk and an all-encompassing, holistic, very all-comprehensive work of art, form of art, work of art. And they are part of that Neue Deutsche Härte Welle, that, that um, new German hardness music, that heavy metal. And what is interesting here is why? Now, it could be looked at in different ways. Even this essay speaks on that. For one, we find that in the Western culture, especially over the last few years, there's been more of a movement towards recognizing um, Black culture, African American culture. You had movements like Black Panther and Black Lives Matter. And it says in this article, interestingly enough, that throughout their discography, Rammstein has often critiqued German reliance on American cultural commodification. So perhaps them using a um, melanated woman to represent Germania could be um, hinting towards that or uh, representing uh, a symbol of that American reliance on black cultural commodification. And it's interesting how bold Rammstein is. In a day and age where you're canceled for very, very, very many things, it's very interesting they would use such provocative imagery to express, perhaps, according to this article, frustration with that commodification that occurs. And commodification means when you treat something as a commodity, when you use it for gain, you take different products and things and you use it as part of the economy to, to commodify, um, to make it a commodity. And I do have to say that I agree with that. I do feel like if we're not careful, we're not paying attention, certain cultures, i.e. the African-American culture or different minority cultures, even in America, are used as a commodity. For example, um, where it is for entertainment purposes, right? And if we're not careful, it would be easy to start stereotyping and thinking, yeah, you know, sports, that's what African-American culture is all about, or hip-hop, or rap. And more and more different people of African-American descent, even in America, are rising up and saying, hold up, we are doctors, we are lawyers, we are intelligent, we're not over here just wearing baggy pants, acting like thugs, not able to speak proper English, and you find all of those, without going into too much detail, you find a lot of those debates, right, where someone speaks against it and then they might be called by other African Americans as like traitors or coons or, you know, that they've been whitewashed, that they're acting white for being intelligent and eloquent. And then you have those who want to fight that and say, no, I don't want some gangster rap attitude to represent my culture. When you have a nation divided against itself or you have a nation in a state of poverty and stress, like Germany was after World War I, in a broken, depressed state. It is easy for someone to swoop in and start making promises and divide people. If we're not careful, we will be divided against one another. The black versus the white mindset, which is, to me, so small-minded. Um, and 
that's how you can divide a nation. That's how you can turn people against each other. But here, this article um, on Ethnomusicology Review suggests that because Rammstein is known or has in past work critiqued Germany's reliance, and I do see that, though I'm not living in Germany anymore, and I just go visit every so often, I do feel like there's a lot of American influences, a lot of westernization, where there could be protests and Black Lives Matter things going on here, and it starts being done in Germany. And I do think and I, that Germany needs to think for itself. The, this essay says that perhaps this African or Afro-German representing Germania is... Is, is meant to represent the aesthetics of a westernized notion of black identity within the 21st century and not necessarily the Afro-German identity. We're looking at German history and a lot of German history and the Germanic people are not of African descent unless we all assume that we all originally come from Africa and Ethiopia. Um, but it could be a provocation to use uh, such a character. It could be meant to provoke the fact that the Afro-German culture is, is being eradicated. The actress, she is an actress and her name is, her name is Ruby Comey, the lady that represents Germania. The, the article says that Comey is depicting the erasure of Afro-Germans within these historical areas throughout the history of Germany, Afro-Germans being erased. They're basing these, these interpretations and thoughts on the fact that the band has a philosophical trajectory, I suppose, in their music in general, of exploring ties with the contemporary society. So there's different ways to interpret it. Did they use an African woman to discuss Afro-German erasure throughout German history, to call out what was in the past, or to address the present and how Germany pulls from some of that commodification we see in America? at the expense of African-American culture. It is argued that the women were used as an icon of strength and power as these statues during wars and those times present the illusion of equal participation while protecting the system that was predominantly run by men. In the video clip Deutschland by Rammstein, the uh, woman, Germania, she's depicted in four distinct main different ways as the nurturer, protecting her country, the bloodthirsty warrior, willing to kill, a, a sexual temptress, temptress when she's wearing that gold and, and um, that gold bikini and walking with those wolves. Wolves is interesting too because it is the symbol from, of the Nazi Reich. The Nazi soldiers and Hitler would consider themselves or would associate, refer, they would associate with wolf, the wolf. She is also presented as that temp temptress, more sexual, and then vulnerable as um, Germania, as that um, iconic figure or as a woman in the in the flesh, literally surrounded by, by meat, by flesh, at the mercy of those evil men eating all that wurst and meat from her, all those sausages that are all over her, so gross. While the puppies that she then gives birth to are a symbolic nod to Germanic religion and mythology, it also could be a representation of werewolf, a symbol of destruction and death. Hitler believed that werewolves are mystical, powerful beings that can shapeshift from being an animal to, to being superior men, which would go with the lyrics that speaks of being arrogant and then the fall. The dogs uh, that she gives birth to are actually Leonberg, our puppies, and um, that could also possibly suggest the new birth of nationalism in Germany. And uh, because the Leonberg, our puppies, were specifically bred to appeal to royalty, and they were given to leaders of wealthy countries, as perhaps a symbol of the return of German prominence. The rock, I really like. Like I said, since I'm starting to appreciate metal more and get into it, I'm learning to like some of this that techno-ish introduction, his voice, very rich and full, very skilled. Um, the song itself, just kind of cool, like heavy. I have to, I might have to check out more of Rammstein stuff now. What I will say is this, Cuban-German perspective. So as a German, let me not even focus on the Cuban part so much. Um, as a German, I love Germany and I love living in America. I love that I'm multicultural, that I'm a third culture kid. Even growing up, I didn't just associate with being German because... I was also um, Cuban-American, I'm a U.S. citizen, dual citizen. So even growing up, you know, I was not just a German kid, right? I spoke American English, I got the Cuban influences, we're speaking both languages at home. And then over the course of my growing up, I was often surrounded also by people from various cultures. I went to a, um, a bilingual seminary and college, surrounded by cultures from all around the world, traveled the world, I've been to Africa, Israel, Cambodia, all over Europe. 
being multicultural, having multicultural influences, friends, and considering myself such, I was never just German. So Germany is a huge part of me, but wasn't just my identity. For one, there's been a lot of immigration to Germany, where, which I find a beautiful thing. There's different influences that shape Germany through the Turkish and the Italian and the Serbian and the Russian and just Ukrainian, all kinds of different people that are shaping Germany and that are becoming German, right? I mean, you see people in Germany that are fluent German because they're maybe second, third generation Italian or Turkish or wherever they're from. And, you know, they, they might say, hey, I'm Turkish or I'm Turkish German you know, and you may even be able to tell based on what they look like, where they may or may not come from. And then they open their mouth and they speak perfect German, right? Like Germany is shaped and ever changing due to immigration, due to people coming in, due to our history. So though I am, my identity, and this is where psychology comes into play, the way we relate to our, where we were born and who we are, where we come from, Germany is my home. And I miss it very often. And I take pride in being German, different things that make me proud to be German, right? Or if I'm driving here in the States and I get frustrated, you know, though the late, last time I was in Germany and I was driving there, I'm like, oh man, maybe I was a little too arrogant because these people making me mad too. Um, but I take pride in those things, having my, my Deutsche Führerschein, you know, my German family, being able to speak the language, you know, like people around the world joke about it being so harsh and intense. And, you know, like I am a proud German. And sometimes growing up, I feel... Like, for example, when we as a class went to a German uh, concentration camp to, to um, Konzentrationslager, as a German student, you often do that. You, like, will tour one of those facilities, one of those places, and really see what was happening in German um, history. And I remember, vague memory, I, I don't want to misspeak because I could be remembering part, that's psychology too, right? False memory syndrome is a thing where we remember certain things through a certain lens and forget others. And uh, the more we think about it, those the way we remember it becomes um becomes um strengthened in our mind but i just remember this situation where uh, one of my classmates pointed out that the french class the f class from french the class from french the class from france from frankreich that had uh, come to this um concentration camp to tour it as well was making comments about us the german kids and i just remember that this vague memory of them like giving us looks or whatever because of Germans, Germany's ugly history, I think many people still have that association. Yeah, sure, the beer and the Lederhosen, but Nazi Hitler, you know? Um, but I, I think it's important to remember that anybody that would just want to put that on Germany now or look at a German and go, oh, whatever, Nazi, that's ignorant. That's just as ignorant to me. I'm not saying it's all the same thing, but I'm just going to put it all in one pot for a second. It's just as ignorant as stereotyping people in America and just separating between white and black. It's highly, 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 did I say highly enough? <laughs> ignorant, in my opinion. Not every melanated person is the same. An African-American is different from an African. And someone from Tanzania is different than someone from Jamaica or from Nigeria or from Zambia. And it would be insulting to say it's just all the same because they're all melanated. Same thing goes for Caucasians. You cannot just say, oh, they're just white. If you try to tell a person from Ukraine or from Russia or a, a lighter skinned Span, uh, Spaniard, a person from Spain, oh, you're just white, you're just a white American, say they live in America now, right? That is not the same as the, a light skinned German. And even Germans, it will vary. And one of the beautiful things about this channel is so many of you come from around the world. One person even commented on my reaction to an Ethiopian artist and said, oh, you know, you look like some of the people in Ethiopia that came through colonization, but they speak uh, Amharic or their language fluently. And they're Ethiopian now. They consider them fellow Ethiopians, even though they're much lighter than, than they are, or vice versa. And that's so beautiful when we realize this is not us versus you. And what's interesting in the lyrics is when it says, I, me, you, we. So to end with this, without getting too deep, yes, Germany has a very horrendous past. And this video is obviously shedding light on that. I don't like the fact, however, that they end with, I cannot love you. And then again, Deutschland, Germany. I love Germany. Is Germany perfect? Absolutely not. Does it have an ugly past? Absolutely yes. But every country in this world does. We like to cherry pick what's evil and what's not somehow. Um, okay, so for example, when we talk slavery, I'm going to make some people mad. And all we talk about is Europeans enslaving Africans and Native Americans. That is not correct. It's horrible. There's no excuse but Africans are also, were also enslaving Africans, still are. Native Americans enslaving Native Americans. Romans conquering and taking over. Arabs, hello, 
Arabs going around and taking everybody in their mama, not everybody. And I'm not, I love Arabic people, by the way. This is not to hate on any country or any culture group. I'm only saying this to point out that human people suck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love y'all. But human people, we just, those especially in power can be so greedy. And I want to say it's important we stay humble since the song talks about you rise high, you can fall really low. Pride comes before the fall. That's that idea to me. That can go for all of us. All of us are capable of unspeakable things. And I know that's easier, that's maybe hard pill to swallow because there's certain things out there that I could never imagine myself doing and I would never do. But if we're honest and humble for a second, if we are born into certain conditions or we raised in a certain way or say something was not right in our mind or we're exposed to certain things, God knows what we would do. God knows where we would end up. That is not to make excuses for wickedness. Please don't misunderstand me and do not twist my words. I will come after you in the comment section. I'm kidding, I won't. Um, but you know what I mean? Like. We are all capable of bad things. And yes, some things are worse than others. Don't get me wrong. And not everybody is is wanting to do bad and making a mistake is different than making wicked choices. But I'm saying all of this to point out that over the course of history, people in their greed, in power, in perversion, in lust, done some crazy things. And that goes for every country or almost every country. But I say this because I'm not a fan of ending on the note, I cannot give you my love. I cannot love you, Germany. No, I love Germany. And yes, do, do they piss me off sometimes? Absolutely. When I go back to Germany, let me be honest with you. Und bitte seid nicht böse. Don't be mad at me. But there are times when I experience some of that German harsh culture because Germans are just way more direct. It's a cold climate culture, more direct, more to themselves. But if you win them over and they, they're your people, they're legit. Um, and I, I won't lie. Like there are times if I go back to Germany and I visit that I appreciate also the influence that foreigners bring. I appreciate the warm culture, cl the warm climate culture that I get in from the Italians and the Turkish and the Arabs and the African. I love that. I love hanging around multicultural groups. A lot of times, just culturally speaking, they're more the way that my Cuban can relate. I have a harder time when I'm in a place where people look at me like, was willst du von mir? What do you want from me? And just serious. In those moments, yeah, I do get frustrated and annoyed with Germany or when I go there and certain things are like, and people are like rude and unfriendly and cold. But not everybody is like that. That too is, you know, could be a stereotype. It depends where you go. And then you have those who, who may be harsh at first or just kind of direct and they warm up to you and They'll have your back. It's not all just the same. We, we tend to want to box things in to get psychological now because it gives us a sense of control. It makes us feel safe. But I think when we do that, we miss a whole lot of beauty that goes for any people group, that goes for any country. And the same goes with when we hold on to our past. And so I think there's a fine line between remembering our past so we can learn from it, never do it again, but also the other extreme being identifying so much with our mistakes that we cannot move forward in freedom. Germany is a beautiful country. And like I said, though, sometimes certain behaviors get on my nerves when I, somebody is like more rude. That's not the case everywhere. Germany is awesome. German people, the German language is strong. Germany is tough. We've been through crap and we're still standing. And though we rose to fame in the world in a negative way, nonetheless, we have a mark on the world with the things we produce and with who we are. And I think that there's no shame in that. There is an extreme patriotism that is unhealthy, right? This over-identifying with your country and where you come from, this over-pride, this ignorance to the bad stuff that's happening when you turn a blind eye. So the other extreme is living in shame of the past and going, oh, I gotta make myself small as to not upset other people. No. Sei stolz, dass du Deutsch bist. Deutschland ist Hammer. Germany is a beautiful country. Germany is hammer. <laughs> Germany is awesome. Like, it's beautiful. It's really clean in a lot of places. I know there's places in the city that are a mess. But when you fly in, it's like clean and organized. When we humble ourselves and we try to find a healthy middle, we can approach a country with love. And ideally, not end on a note that says, I cannot give you my love, Germany. I would prefer to end on the note, I will give you my love and I will forgive and I will rise up again. Not to excuse the bad that has happened, but also not to base our entire existence on that. Because if we do that, we're doomed. A lot of us have done things that if we base our identity on our mistakes, we'd, we'd, we're done. Da ist aber nichts mehr mit aus. So I, 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 yeah, I think my encouragement, my, I think my conclusion as a German would be, I love Germany. Every country has pros and cons. At the end of the day, I think that Germany has a lot to be proud of too. And I think Germany should just keep growing. And I do think that that's also part of the picture that's being painted here. This idea of all the blood and violence and history, but also at the end of the day, it's still we, you and I, we, Germany. Let's keep investing in our country and make it what we want it to be, a better place. And that goes for every place. That goes for ourselves. That goes for our community, our families, our house. It starts there. It starts in your home. So make good choices. Choose life today. Walk humbly, act justly, love mercy, be kind. 
and remember you are loved and you matter. I liked it. It was intense. The video clip was, was heavy. I'm, yeah, it's not something I'm going to listen to on repeat, but I'm really glad I checked it out. What do you think? I may have missed things or a lot. Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe and I'll see you on the next ride. I wonder where we'll go next. See you then. Ayo. Und jetzt nochmal kurz auf Deutsch. Ich mache normalerweise meine Videos auf Englisch, aber abonniert, wenn euch das Video gefallen hat. Ähm, sagt mir, was ihr denkt. Was hat euch gefallen an dem Lied? Was denkt ihr? Ähm, ja, ich glaube, jetzt weiß ich gar nicht mehr, was ich sagen wollte. Like, shared, teilt es mit euren Freunden, abonniert und willkommen auf dem ultimativen Musikkanal. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Ejo! Hey